Well, it is such a joy to be here at the Cathedral Basilica. It was 10 years ago that I was in residence here in my final year of formation at Kenrick Glennon Seminary. At that time, it was Monsignor Pins of happy memory. May he rest in peace. It was just a few years before that, by God's providence, that I met your current rector, Monsignor Breyer, when he was at St. Raphael's. So it is such a joy to be here. It is such a privilege. Ten years later into my priesthood, I am the pastor of a parish in Kansas City. 2,000 strong, 2,000 families, nearly 8,000 souls in that parish. And I want to speak to you about wisdom and prudence. Every single day I find myself begging Jesus for the grace of wisdom to see this parish as he sees it and to discern carefully the most important thing. For as a pastor, it is truly important to focus on the most important thing at all times and to have the prudence to implement best practice, to have the prudence to clearly define a mission, to establish core values, to build an org chart. It is very prudent to make sure that you have the right people in the right seats. Without these things, a parish like any other organization can struggle to move. As parents or as teachers or as coaches or as leaders in industry, you must ask the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom to see the organization or to see the family or to look at your spouse and to see them as God sees them. For this is wisdom as it is understood by St. Thomas Aquinas and our entire apostolic tradition. It was given, the insight was given in the second reading. The one who is able to see all of us before whom we are all naked as it was defined in the letter to the Hebrews. We should not fear this. It should be a, a source of great confidence that we do not stand alone and that there is one who is able to see all things in the light of day. But again, what I wanna focus on this morning, so once upon a time, so here's a beautiful example before I do that. Here's the difference between wisdom and folly. In the first reading, we heard the author name, wisdom meant more to him than scepter and throne. Without wisdom, scepter and throne can become a burden and it can crush even the strongest. We heard in that first reading that wisdom meant more to the author than health and comeliness in a culture with respect as vain as ours. So many live in fear of losing their youth, losing their health, losing their comeliness. For what do I have if I don't have my health? And yet all of these meant little to the author held up against wisdom and prudence. A tremendous example of, a, tr a, terrible, a terrible example of folly could be seen in that gospel reading this rich young man who has been faithful to the commandments, who has had the right disposition towards the law of the Lord, when confronted with the word incarnate, who has asked him to give up riches so that he may come follow him, to turn away from the word incarnate, to refuse to let go of these possessions would become a burden for him. This rich young man whose name is lost from the pages of history. Here's a fascinating thought. What was the mission that Jesus wanted to give him, which he was incapable of receiving because he did not have the prudence, the art of making good decisions. He did not have the wisdom, the ability to see all things in the light of God's truth. And so he went away sad. To conclude, what I wish to share with you is a, non a wonderful example in my own story, which speaks to wisdom. It speaks to the ability to see things as God sees them. However difficult the story is to believe, it is a true story. So my parents, because they did not have prudence when they first started dating, 
the prudence to think through, we should be praying together, we should be discerning, is this who, whom the Lord wants me to date? We should be thinking about the long-term picture of marriage because they were not being prudent. And boy, do I love them and I understand them. Because they were not prudent in the way that they chose to date, they found themselves expecting a child a few months into dating. This guy. And my abortion was scheduled for a Saturday morning 39 years ago. It's not that my mother wanted this. She did not want this. It's that the burden and the weight of shame I cannot face this unplanned pregnancy. I have too many dreams for my professional career. I was voted most likely never to have children going all the way back to high school. And what will I tell my father who has told me you had better not ever get pregnant out of wedlock? Well, goodness gracious, now she's pregnant. It was very close to what would have been the end of my life that my mother, who knew this wasn't right and did not want this, but was crushed under the weight of shame, that she was destroying her own apartment, throwing furniture, screaming and crying because she did not want this, but she did not see another way forward. And it was at the very end of that night, as she was just about to collapse into her bed for sleep because she was completely exhausted, that she heard a voice in her heart and that voice told her, I am your mother and I have chosen this child and I'm going to take care of you, but you must cancel the abortion. It's only because it was later canceled that now I am a priest, that some of the greatest years of my life took place at Kenrick Lennon Seminary that I've had the chance to walk with very wise and prudent priests like Monsignor Pins and Monsignor Breyer, that I have now been given a chance to serve as a priest of the sixth largest parish in the archdiocese with 8,000 souls. Wisdom has this way of giving us a different perspective, even in the most challenging of circumstances. And we must ask the Holy Spirit each day Holy Spirit, please give me the prudence to make good decisions. Holy Spirit, please help me to see all things as God sees them. Without this grace, I would not be here. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 